Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you a $350 gaming PC that you can get that'll be great for playing games like Minecraft and, uh, you know, anything really that's on the market, actually. Uh, it's a great little system, and for $350, bucks, you know, that's cheaper than a console, and you can do stuff like video editing, you can surf the web on it. It's a great way to start getting into PC gaming, so I'll have all the parts linked in the description, I'll go over each part individually so you can kind of see what there is, and, yeah, you can get your own thoughts on it as well if you want to get that part or not. But yeah, it's a really great little system for 350 bucks, and you know, it's like I said, it's a great way to get into PC gaming. But I guess one of the downsides for some people is that you actually have to go and build the system yourself. So you buy all of these parts, you know, and then you have to hook everything up. And for some people, I guess that can be a little scary because they haven't done it before. And I can I totally understand that. When I started building computers, I'm like, you know, if I screw this up, you know, that's X amount of money gone because you know I screwed something up. And I definitely I can totally understand that but for anybody who wants to get into PC gaming I highly recommend you know looking videos up and stuff like that and on how to build computers because then once you get like an understanding of the computer and stuff like that you'll know how to upgrade it in the future and you know it's really I, personally I love building computers I think it's really fun so you know you can some people might find it fun and then you can you know build computers for friends and stuff like that and maybe sell it to them or something like that in the future that's you know one of the best things about building computers you know is you can just build them and sell them and stuff like that so yeah I'm gonna be showing you this $350 PC here um, and I've actually picked out two processors here I have the AMD Athlon X4 750k quad core 3.4 gigahertz processor for 77 bucks and I've got this other one here the AMD Athlon X2 340 dual core 3.2 3.2 gigahertz processor here so the reason I picked out these two is because it's more based on what you want to do. So if you're really big on saving money and you know you're just going to play Minecraft and surf the internet and stuff like that, this is the one you want to get. It's just a dual core, and it's 43 bucks. And you know if you just play in mine like I said if you're playing Minecraft, you know, Minecraft isn't totally demanding or anything like that and you wouldn't see a whole lot of improvements uh, you know between this dual core and this quad core just by playing Minecraft unless you're using like you know multi-core rendering and Optifine or something like that if you're using Optifine then the quad core is gonna perform a lot better but you know if you're not modding or anything like that then this dual core is, just, is gonna do just as good and it's cheaper so if you wanna get if you wanna go with that then a little it's a little good processor to get started out with now this one right here is the quad core 3.4 gigahertz processor and for 77 bucks I mean this processor cannot be matched you know you can do some video editing on this one uh, if you can play games like Battlefield 4 Battlefield Hardlines coming up Watch Dogs games like that this game this processor can handle very well and it's 77 bucks I mean that's a steal for a processor like this and that's what I would recommend if you if you want to do YouTube and stuff like that and you want to play some newer games this is definitely the processor to get when you're on a budget. Next we have this motherboard here. This is the ASRock FM2 A58M-VG3+. $43 motherboard. It's just a really basic thing. You know, it's just the bare minimum on motherboards, but it's going to get the job done and I'll show you a picture of it here. It's, it sucks that it sucks that it's sideways, but I guess I'll show you the rear IO. Um, here you have your VGA here that you're actually not going to be using because we have dedicated uh, video. I'll show you that in the future, but you have your uh, USB ports here, your audio, your onboard gigabyte LAN, gigabit LAN, I should say, stuff like that. That's just the rear. That's what you know what you're plugging stuff into basically. That's your motherboard there for 43 bucks. I mean, this is you know ASRock makes great boards, so good good choice. Here we have the G Scale Rip Jaws X Series 4 GB RAM. It's DDR3 1600. 35 bucks is a great price for this because G Scale makes really, really high quality products. I really like G Scale, and this is you know no exception. So yeah, like I said, 35 bucks you get four gigs of RAM. Say you want to upgrade in the future. Keep this in mind. Um, if you want to upgrade. Uh, you can't like you know if you buy this one right here and you want to get another four gigabyte stick, uh, you have to make sure you get the exact same model. So if you you know if you bought this four gigabyte and then you bought another one in the future the same model that would work. You'd have eight gigabytes of RAM. That's great. But say you bought this G scale one for this four gigabytes and then you bought like a Corsair one that's also four gigabytes but it's a different brand, different model. You'd have issues with your timings and stuff like that and your frequencies and that would cause system instability. You could get crashing and stuff in your operating system, and it would just 
it wouldn't be pretty. It would not be something you want to deal with. So keep that in mind. If you want to upgrade the RAM, either buy an entire new set of RAM or buy another stick of it that's the exact same model. Next, we have the case, and this is what it's going to look like. And, you know, everything's going inside of here. This is the Rosewell FBM-101 um, dual fan micro ATX mini tower computer case for 27 bucks. Rosewell makes really good products. I've Both of my computer cases are Rosewell, and I really like them. And I'll show you the inside of it here. Well, there's a picture full screen of, not full screen, but a bigger picture of uh, the outside of it, what it looks like. Very basic case, you know, and you can always, again, upgrade it in the future. But, you know, for starting out and stuff, this is a great case because you have your rear intake fan right here. And then you have in the front, you have your front intake fan right there. So it comes with two fans, which is really nice. You can always mount another fan on the side panel right here if you want. But, yeah, this is like your hard drives go up here. DVD drive goes up here, which I didn't include in this build. Uh, your motherboard will sit back on this here. And then, yeah, mother or power supply goes up top here. So that's a system or what it looks like, the case. Here is the Gigabyte R7 250. It's a two gigabyte graphics card for 85 bucks. Gigabyte, gigabyte makes good products, and this is an AMD card actually, but it's got the Gigabyte cooler on it. And they, like I said, Gigabyte makes good stuff. It's a good cooler. And this is like when I brought it before about the, uh, the display here, uh, like the VGA connector here. You're not gonna use that because what you'll do with this graphics card is you'll take it and this right here, the PCI uh, slot, not slot, but the connect, I don't even remember the name of it now. Wow. Anyways, uh, the PCI, yeah, whatever. Um, that goes right in here in this PCI Express slot right there. That'll sit there, and then you'll plug all of your display stuff into either uh, this one of these DVI ports here, or this VGA or HDMI. That's where you plug your monitor into. And that's how you're going to get your video. And having a dedicated graphics card makes all the difference when it comes to gaming. Literally all the difference. Because I was thinking about actually using an AMD APU in this build, which is a processor that has graphics built onto it. But not only do those have really weak processing power, but the video, uh, the video performance on them is also garbage. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try to squeeze in this graphics card here. And like I said, great card, and you'll be able to play games. You'll be, you'll, be, you'll be able to play newer games like Battlefield 4, Battlefield Hardline, Watch Dogs is another one you'll be able to play. Just don't expect those to work at like ultra settings, 1080p or something. You'll definitely have to turn your resolution down, turn your graphics settings down, but it will work, and it is a great card for the money. And like I said, having a dedicated graphics card makes all the difference. Here we have the Seasonic 450 watt power supply. It's 65 bucks, and this is a part where you don't want to cheap out because having a nice power or having a cheap power supply, I should say, uh, can you know if it fails, can screw up your entire system. So you want to buy from a brand that you, you can trust. And Seasonic is one of those brands. They make high quality parts, and here we have an 80 plus gold certified, uh, which means it's it's really efficient. It's power efficient, so. Good power supply here. You don't have to worry about it failing. It is only 450 watts, which will be more than enough to power the system here, but doesn't give you much upgrade headroom in the future. So, like, what you can do over here is you see maximum power. You can change it to, like, 550. You can change it to 650 watts. Anything like that. Personally, I always get, like, just a really powerful power supply because if I just want to upgrade in the future and not have to worry about the power supply not being enough. So, I just get a powerful power supply and then not worry about it. But if you are on a budget and you're not thinking about upgrading anytime soon, go with a 450 watt for 65 bucks. You're not going to have you know any problems in this build. Last and a little bit least, but still important, we have the uh, Seagate Barracuda 250 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drive for 23 bucks. So 250 gigabytes really isn't that much. You know, if you're just, like I said before, playing Minecraft and getting on the internet, maybe putting a few other games on there, it'll be enough. But overall, this is like, you know, it's not a whole lot of storage. And I understand that, but the reason I always cheap out on the hard drives and like budget builds and stuff like that is because hard drives are probably the most easy part to upgrade in a computer possible. All you gotta do is slip in another one, and you'll, you know if you buy a one terabyte hard drive in the future, then you'll have your one terabyte hard drive and your 250 gigabyte hard drive, so you have a little bit more storage there. 
and you know it's really easy to throw another hard drive in there so that's why I always go with this because if you're going to upgrade this is probably going to be one of the first parts but it is really easy so that's why I always do that but you always can go ahead and get you know a 500 gigabyte or even a one excuse me a 500 gigabyte or one terabyte hard drive in the future so that's a build guys like I said all the links are down in the description let me know what you think and you know if you think know of any other parts that you would actually use instead of what I used in this video so leave your comments down below and I hope to see you all in the next one thanks for watching